So I just got back from the Mobile Mapping Technology Conference in Padua, Italy. I learned so much at this conference about utilizing mobile mapping and the different sensors and techniques utilized in order to capture data. And it definitely motivated me to look at different types of sensors that I have and how I can incorporate them in order to do my own mobile mapping. Now I have a system that can do all of that. It's my iPhone with the Viadoc RTK Rover. This entire system is capable of doing high accuracy mapping and I've been doing it for years now. But what if we were able to make this mobile mapping? What if I could attach this to a platform and while that platform is moving, capture data? Like this one. These things have flooded every major city around the world and my entire time in Italy I saw these scooters being driven around and parked all over the place for people to use. Now the scooter that I'm using is the TurboMax X7 Max and thank you to TurboAnt for sponsoring today's video and actually supplying us with a scooter for us to do our mobile mapping project. The X7 Ant is a perfect personal scooter providing you with three driving speeds 10, 20, and 30 kilometers an hour. It also has safety features so at night you can turn on headlights so that drivers can see you while you're using your scooter and protect you on the road. It also has a detachable battery so you can travel with the scooter. And the scooter has about 50 kilometers of range which is equivalent to 30 miles, giving you plenty of distance to travel using the X7 Max. Check out the link in the description if you want to pick up one of these scooters. And thank you Turbo Ant for sponsoring today's video. Now we need to engineer the sensors onto the electric scooter in order to properly collect data. The first one, which is obvious, is the iPhone with the Viadoc RTK Rover. And I'm thinking to position this somewhere in the front of the scooter in order to maximize the field of view of the data being collected. But also to validate the accuracy of the data being collected, we're going to need a separate ground truthing sensor in order to validate the accuracy of the data. Now for ground truthing, we're going to utilize two different systems. The first is a GNSS receiver, and the second is a surveying total station. For the GNSS receiver, I opted to use the Leica GS18i. The reason for this is that it has a built-in IMU, which would allow us to correct the positions of the GNSS receiver as we're driving the scooter down the road. The benefits of using a GNSS receiver is that it's an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Our mapping system with the iPhone utilizes GNSS positioning, and so ground truthing using the same principles will allow us to compare the trajectories of our mobile mapping system. However, the disadvantage is if we were to lose the fixed position of our our Viadoc and our GS18i ground truthing GNSS receiver, then we would have no ground truthing data that we could compare to the trajectories of the mobile mapping system. In which case, using a second approach of a total station might be better. Total stations aren't dependent on satellite positioning and rather have a relative distance taken from the total station to a surveying prism. By attaching a Leica 360 prism on the back of the scooter, we can measure the trajectories of the scooter as we're driving down the road and not have to worry about RTK corrections as the positions are all relatively measured provided that we continue to have a visual line of sight between our total station and prism. By taking the relative distance between the ground truthing system and the iPhone with the Viadoc, we can then calculate the distances and associate them to the timestamp at which those observations were taken and the difference between the two positions can give us our ground truthing accuracy throughout the entire mapping process. Now looking at the scooter, I think the front right here would be a great place to place the iPhone so that I can collect data for everything that's in front of us. Now to support the weight of the iPhone with the Viadoc, I think a metal plate like this one can just slide in right here and I can screw this into place and have this metal plate. This does mean the iPhone will sit at an angle. Let me see what that angle looks like. I have the iPhone sitting like this. God, that's a little concerning. I feel like I'm a little high. Like if I was angled like this, it would be better. I guess if I could bend this plate just a little bit, probably 20 to 30 degrees, that'll give our iPhone more visibility of the ground and it won't be staring into the sky as much. So yeah, I think this plate just needs to be bent a little. I think that will do, right? So now this part will go into the scooter and this part will be flatter. Place our iPhone like this. It'll actually be able to map more than had it been placed like this. So I'm gonna mark off where these screws belong. Looks like right here, right here. And now we'll attach a 1 8 of an inch drill bit into our drill and we will drill into our metal plate. Oh. 
so it'll hold spaced out correctly to be attached in the front of the electric scooter. Tightened these two screws that were holding the screen and now the plate is on here. Now this is a quarter inch thread that will go on the bottom of the Viadoc to hold the entire system in place. I'll attach that here on the bottom of the plate and we'll screw the iPhone and the Viadoc in. Tighten this up. I'm going to really tighten this up. Very nice. And now I can take this 5 8 of an inch screw and this is where our ground truthing sensor will go. Tighten this so it's nice and snug and doesn't rub against the wheel. i oh, scratch this a little. Oh well. Nice. I like that. So now when I lift this up, you can see, yep, nice and clear. I'm gonna attach a sensor back here and we'll start by adding the Leica GS18i GNSS receiver. Okay, and now that we have the GNSS receiver attached to the back, let's talk about data collection. The X7 Max has three different speeds, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, and 30 kilometers per hour. The idea is we want to test the performance based off of speed as well to see how well the accuracy of our trajectories are, as well as the point clouds that'll be generated using the LiDAR and camera sensors. Now the ground truthing system is good for validating the trajectories, however to validate the accuracies of the point clouds, we're just simply going to use checkpoints. I use this GS18i to collect 40 43 different checkpoints along our study area and we'll be comparing the coordinates of these points on the point cloud to see how accurate each of them are at 10, 20, and 30 kilometers per hour. Now in the Leica Captivate software, I'm going to be assigning auto points to be measured at a set interval. So if I go into our settings, I'm going to have it collect a point at a certain distance and I want that distance to be one meter, which is equivalent to 3.281 feet. I'll say okay. So I'm going to connect to NTRIP right now to get corrections for our GNSS receiver. Here we go, connected to Entrip Caster. RTK initialized. All right, our RTK is initialized. And now I want to initialize our IMU for tilt compensation. So all I have to do is just wiggle the scooter to wiggle the GNSS receiver. Tilt compensation started. All right, now we've initialized our IMU and we can start collecting data. All right, so we've got a couple of different things going on right now. Number one, we have the Pix4D Catch app loaded on the iPhone with the Viadoc. We have RTK corrections coming in for our trajectories. We also have like a Captivate running, ready to collect data on our ground truthing system. We'll start by collecting data at 10 kilometers per hour. Okay, so I'm going to start ground truthing, pick this up and start collecting data. So as you can see on all of these different screens, what's going on, we're collecting data on Pix4D Catch as well as our ground truthing system every one meter. So we've lost RTK on the GS18i, but we still have RTK on our Vidoc. So like I said, this is gonna be interesting in areas where we lose RTK. Um, I'm going over a lot of trees. So having another GNSS receiver as our ground truthing system is going to come with its disadvantages. Okay, looks like we got our RTK back on our ground truthing system. Of course, if we were to lose RTK with our Viadoc, as always, we'll be depending on our SLAM um, to, to estimate the positions of the iPhone. But looks like so far good. We're gonna make our turn right now. And I feel like at 10 kilometers per hour, this is pretty slow. Again, the road that we're doing this mapping on isn't very long. So I think that 10 kilometers an hour is probably fine. It's not gonna take that much longer. But if you're doing, you know, multiple neighborhoods, uh, busy streets, then maybe this speed might be a little slow from a practical standpoint. Okay, and we're in the home stretch here, coming in, almost done. Okay, and we'll see. Stop here, pause, fix 4D catch, and we'll stop collecting data on like a Captivate. Okay, and there is the data collected. Now this is the LiDAR point cloud. Of course, we would use the imagery as well to build out um, a photogrammetric point cloud, but overall, I'm very happy with this first data set. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time we will do it at 20 kilometers per hour. So we'll then start collecting data on Pix4D Catch, and away we go. I can definitely feel the speed on this one right here, but I think we're still collecting good data. Still losing RTK in areas where there's a lot of tree coverage. Coming up here on the turn. Oh, I gotta slow it down just a tad. All right, I think we're doing good so far. I'm just concerned about maintaining the RTK fix. That's 
Yep, that, that continues to be the issue. <laughs> All right, here we go. We're coming in at the end. We'll stop it here. Here is our 20 kilometer per hour run. So you can see a lot of green, some red though. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how the slam works and how accurate it is in comparison to our ground truthing system. Okay, last and final test at 30 kilometers per hour. Let's see how well the mobile mapping system does and we'll later on see how accurate this point cloud will be. Start the ground truthing, start collecting data. Here we go. This is going to be 30 kilometers per hour. This is fast, man. I can feel the wind. Oh my God. Okay, I gotta slow down here. Oh. Come around the turn. Let's pick up some speed again. You know when you like fly your drone too fast and then you get like all these blurry images, even when you have like global shutter, um, I mean, you can fly a lot fast with global shutter, but just like, you just go way too fast. Hey, look at squirrel. You go just way too fast, right? And then it just ruins all your imagery. That's what I'm worried about with this. Yeah, we don't have RTK right now on either system, so that's not good. Okay, cool, they're back. And all right, here we go. Let's, <laughs> that's it right there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there is definitely a lot more red, um, especially on the return here. There must be just a lot of tree coverage in that area. Yeah, there is, if you look at it, like that's where most of the tree coverage is. So I anticipate that that is probably where most of our error is going to be. But nonetheless, there we go. That is our 10, 20, and 30 kilometer runs using the GNSS receiver as our ground truthing system. Now, when we traditionally use a total station, we typically set up over a known point or we resection to a bunch of points that we do know to establish our position. For this experiment, we are going to set up over known points. Points that I used a GNSS receiver to establish and then did a grid to ground conversion so that the total station is working on the same coordinate system. Now the biggest thing to remember about total stations is they're not dependent on satellites or corrections or any of the mumble jumble you'll get with GNSS receivers. These machines are all about relative distances. What does the total station see? How far away is it? At what angle is it in reference to the back site? And boom, there's your coordinate. Now I've talked about this little thing before. This is a Leica 360 prism. Its reflective property means that if you look right into the center of it, you actually find a point where all of these mirrors meet. In real life, you would see your eyeball. In this video, you probably see the camera that I'm recording and the total station will see itself and actually calculate the coordinates that we're at based off of where this prism is. Now in traditional surveying, this prism would sit on a pole and then I would just tell the total station to power search for me. And the total station will rotate until it finds this prism. Lock to target and then it's locked onto me. But it goes further than that. If I pick up this prism and I start to move, this total station is now tracking me. And so this gave me the brilliant idea. What if I take this part right here and I put it on the back of the scooter? So here's what needs to happen. I'll take my GNSS receiver off of the back. Okay, attach this little converter, take the prism, and put it just like that. And now I can literally ride the scooter and the total station tracks my position. And so as long as I can maintain visual line of sight between the total station and the prism, I should be able to do this exact same experiment going down the road. And I have to worry about satellite visibility or any of the other issues that you might have with GNSS because I can just take a relative distance from the scooter to the total station. We have the total station running on like a Captivate. We have Pix4D Catch running on the iPhone. And now it's time to start collecting data using the total station as our ground truthing system. Start collecting data, here we go. And this is 10 kilometers per hour. Now the trouble here is if a car crosses, I might lose my lock on my prism. Now at this slow speed though, will it be a problem? Maybe not. Maybe at faster speeds it will be. We'll find out. The benefit here of course is that if we're under trees, I don't have to worry about that because, well, I don't have to depend on satellites to get my position. Everything is relative between the total station and the prism. As long as they can see each other, that's all that matters. Okay, and I've gotten to the end of our study area so I can stop it. Now again, we can't make the turn around like we did with the GNSS receiver because if we do, then the prism will be out of sight of the total station and we won't get any ground truthing data. So we'll have to set up somewhere in this area 
and have the total station look that way um, so that the prism is behind me. Everything looks fine here on Pix4D Catch. If I zoom in here, you can see the trajectories of the points that we measured. So a couple of breaks in there, that's probably where a car might have passed. But overall, we've got continuous data collection, which is awesome. And I know that I've got plenty of points that I can work with for ground truthing, and I didn't have to depend on satellites. Okay, here we go, 20 kilometers an hour. Start collecting data. I think we should be okay with 20 kilometers an hour. Doesn't seem that much faster, but more efficient than 10 kilometers an hour. Doesn't seem like any cars are in the area, so I don't have to worry about losing line of sight, which is nice. Viaduct seems to maintain its RTK fix. All right, there we go. Stop and done. Very nice and very clean. And you can see the same trajectories on like a Captivate, so I think we did pretty good there. All right, last and final run, 30 kilometers an hour. There we go. All right, let's do this. I think same as last time, the 30 kilometer per hour run. I feel the wind in my face. It's fast. Oh boy, a lot of wobble there. Here we are, we're approaching the end already. That was fairly fast. Okay, let's slow down. <laughs> Done. And there we go, that's our 30 kilometer per hour run. Here we go. That's how it's done. So that's the left side of the road. I'm gonna take the total station and set it up on the other end. And off camera, I'll do this three more times to get the right side of the road. Now I did do a full length research paper about this that you are welcome to check out. I basically go over all of the data analysis between comparing the trajectories of the Viadoc to the ground truthing of the GNSS receiver and the total station. We also do a point cloud analysis and look at how accurate these point clouds are based off of the mobile mapping platform that they're on in comparison to just collecting the data with the GNSS receiver. What we found was using a speed of 10 kilometers per hour and 20 kilometers per hour gave us good trajectories on the viaduct, even in areas where there was no RTK fix. This was validated with both the GNSS receiver and the total station. However, at 30 kilometers per hour, we do see a major shift in trajectory with the GNSS receiver and the total station couldn't even keep up with the scooter at 30 kilometers per hour, losing visual line of sight and not collecting any data. The accuracy levels of 10 and 20 kilometers per hour were pretty similar to that of just holding the iPhone with the viaduct and doing a handheld scan. And at 30 kilometers per hour, we have much more compromised accuracies in our point clouds and that's probably due to the increased speed once again special thanks to turbo ant for sponsoring today's video and giving us a scooter to run these experiments on as well as to pix4d and Leica geosystems for supplying us with the hardware in order to run this experiment if you guys enjoyed these types of videos be sure to subscribe to the youtube channel and i'll see you all next time